<coughs> Ingot Chewer we already talked about as one of those creatures that comes into play in two for ones uh, because it destroys an artifact. But also Deadshot Minotaur kills a lot of the creatures in the Tulip's deck. It kills Ornithopter and uh, it also kills the Vault Scourges when they come into play off of the uh, Living End as well. Okay. We're both players keeping their seven. Mm -hmm. Catacomb. So James James doesn't have to worry too much about flyers being in the graveyard when he does that. So once again, the start looks a lot like game one. Uh, it's the identical start, actually. Oh, he's got Mox Opal to pair with it this time, so slightly better. Both players here at uh, at eighteen, I believe. Oh, Frexy Mana. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a Galv Blast. Oh, got you. Wow. James already finding himself at 13. Now, have you... It was a while ago. I believe it was... Did you watch the ever watch the finals? Or I think the semifinals of Pro Tour Dark Ascension? Yes. With the, the triple... The Kibler, the Kibler Finkel match. With the triple Galvanic Blast. Yeah, I was at a Sonic... Waiting on a, uh, I will never forget where I was when that. When <laughs> no that one, I watched it live. No, of course. Why didn't he block? Why didn't he block? Why, why didn't he block? Come yeah. on. Oh yeah. You no, can't. we we'll, we won't go on a. a you had the wolf token. Uh, yeah, you just. It was inconceivable. Every time I he see, had the, he had to block the wolf token. Every time spirit, I see, it was free. He had another lord in his hand. Everything was super lethal. Now speaking of super lethal, here's a very large cranial plating buff that's going to go on this ornithopter right now. And that is attack for one, two, three, four, five, uh, six damage total, I believe. And uh, one of it lifelink. So I believe it's going to go to seven. <clears throat> yep, 719. And of course, one of it lifelink. Good old Vault Scourge. I like his choice not to put it on the Vault Scourge. No. The life gain does not matter that much. And he's playing around that one damage ping. <clears throat> exactly. Good old zero twos. Or sometimes five pipes. Yeah, if, if, like, you just, you want him to beast within your Ornithopter. If, if that's, like, the best card in his hand or his dismember or whatever, you want it to not be on the Vault Scourge. Because if the Vault Scourge gets destroyed and you had the plating on that, then... You just like you're losing damage <clears throat> because he's killing the one that has power on it, and then you're you lose extra because uh, the cranial plating counts artifacts as well. Mm -hmm. It's just more damage if you if you do it the other way. Looks like we'll see a living end here. Yep. Mm hmm. Sometimes you get worried while you're cycling through, and you're just like, "Wow, did I did I take them out? Do, are they in my sideboard?" Because you just have to go for what, so long. What have I done? You find one. Yeah, it's like a it's like an irrational fear that you wake up one day and the you you cast a cascade card, but it's just not there. And unfortunately, ah, there it is. All right. It's not you don't shuffle your library afterwards. You put them on bottom from cascade, so you can't just flip over your deck and, and grab it yeah. out. You do you do have to randomize the cards revealed. Mm-hmm. But um, they go in the bottom in a random order. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do have to reveal each card one at a time because if you don't, uh, it's 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 cheating. That's true. And there's that etch champion rules violation. It's not necessarily cheating. It's failure to maintain for sure. So here's that protection from lots of colors. Uh, I believe it's a six power mm -hmm. creature at the moment potential for that to be greater because there are uh, two copies with different art of Blink Moth Nexus. Yeah. So he can just use those to animate themselves There's a Brindle to swing board. in for lethal. That is also a card from the sideboard, I believe. So he's boarded a little bit differently than we were first advised. <clears throat> Probably just going to animate here and get frisky. I believe it's a lethal swing if he just animates. Yeah, if he animates his man lands, he'll have one, two, three, four, five, six artifacts with the that's plus six onto the two two. Yep. Which makes that eight damage. Yep. That is correct. All of his 
all of them are artifacts at the moment. So that's plus six, so eight, and it's a swing for 10. So he's gonna pop the Brindleboar, go up to 11, and I believe take 10, go down to one. Yeah, because the blinks are uh, flyers. So effectively taking six. Yeah, he's at, he's at one. Yep. Just a Mox Opal in hand for Phil. Carabid needs to find something. Did he just draw a living end? No, I think he drew Fulminator, which is still not good enough. He may have a copy of Violent Outburst to cast. Uh, or perhaps he's just bluffing that. In any case, I think uh, just, just an attack here is going to be good enough. Thought cast. It's going to resolve. Glimmer Void and a Memnite. I think just I think just swinging in here is is going to be good enough. Battle. I don't see any reason to turn on the other guys. Yep. If he, if he turns on any of the blink moths, they also die in the the catastrophe that is living end. This is going to prolong the game a fair amount, I think, because there's Brindlebore coming back in. Really needs to grab a chewer take out the plating i agree so we'll see what happens here end of turn or for the rest of phil's turn i should say should spend some time equipping to an ornithopter oh, just false scourge also acceptable both have evasion <clears throat> can't tell if he's i think he's also got a demonic dread um that would require that the third copy of living in not be in his hand because he's cast two and the deck only plays three um because drawing them is abysmal so yeah. you you have to have three in your deck because you have to do it multiple times but yeah i think he does have a copy in his hand so i don't think cascading into one yeah there it is so cascading into the third is not going to be an option for him he'll have to suspend if he wants to do it again um not sure he has a way to win this. He needs to deal with the plating. He needs with every creature. Every, everything is lethal in the air. Oh, but I'm not trying there. I'm sorry. He's got the ornithopter. Well, he does have he does have three uh, attackers in the air. Yeah. Because the two oh. lands can fire up and those fly. As well as scourge and the thopter. If he, if he moves yeah, the plating yeah. over, he's got four different threats. Yeah. So he's gonna cycle here. Found a land. And, yeah. yeah. So there's, there's the match. Concession. Philip Lauren's going to take it two games to one. James just unable to find any chewers. Um, and that's really the card that you need to have. Uh, if he has an Inga chewer, or I don't know if he kept Beast Within in, I would assume that he would keep it in because it's just it's just one of those cards that's a, nece it's a necessity. Because we only um, saw the one plating there, and if he had, like, dropped a chewer early all those living ends cycling is just would have just a, been yeah, you know two or three damage turning into one damage yeah it's just not an issue anymore the, the plating and the ravager are the cards that are the payoff for having all those artifacts spat out onto the field um we're gonna get word and see if there's another match coming your way in just a moment we've got our table spotter hunting trying to rustle us up some grub or magic as the case is in this one. Oh, sorry not no grub no grub oh no just cards. Maybe someone's playing some Infect. It's probably Grub and some the grub Infect there. deck. Yeah. yeah. I think I saw a couple people yeah. playing it. So we've it, we've got a lot of uh, people who are not no, not the usual crowd tonight. Yeah, forty. I'm not sure where that came from. Forty people. Well, a lot mm -hmm. of uh, the colleges in Atlanta and local Back areas have session. are started up today. Yep. So, so a lot of out of town people yeah, folks, are all here. Folks maybe spent their summers away and have come back or you know, are new to the area because of they go to school X yeah. or school Maybe y. they're freshmen. Maybe they're new. Maybe they are. We try to bring the new people in. Of course. Maybe they heard we were streaming and they I, wanted to get their feature match. They wanted to get their hands on a feature match. Looks like we do have some people um, coming over. Uh, not quite sure. We, we do have a backup. <clears throat> they are getting in position. We'll get that information for you guys soon. Yep. Spell Pierce. I love Spell Pierce out of the sideboard for affinity. 
that and like unified will just people just don't play around blue spells because affinity is cast or sorry not affinity but um cascade does cast the card yeah, so you can you, interact you with it to, on you a stack. resolve it yeah. yeah it is a it is a very resilient deck against counter spells both the sideboard and the just the, the specific cards that it plays it's very hard to leave up counter mana when the end of turn threat is a beast within targeting your land which is like if that resolves you don't have the mana to counter it when they untap and go for it or like if you counter that then they just untap and go for it i love like it's, it's just you are fudged if you do and fudged if you do not <laughs> we got, we're getting our match slip fed under the door into the streaming booth right now so that you guys don't get wonky screeching noises all right on the uh on the left hand side we have carter norris playing elves and joe delval playing Terma twin so we can get that all that changed up here in just a moment and then we will see i guess this is game three but <clears throat> there is there is not uh, any information on that yet we will get that clarified as well Yeah, it is. They are going to game three. Okay. Each player has won one and also lost one. Oh, baby. Oh, my. So let's say you're going to a modern event this weekend. PPTQ, whatever, whatever it is. What deck are you sleeving up? Is it a is it a PPTQ? Oh yeah, it's a PPTQ. Okay. It's it's serious business. Um, <clears throat> if it's serious business, then I'm probably gonna play burn. Mm. Um, so modern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, All right. I, no. To All tell right. to tell the truth, um, I I really just think that burn is super well positioned. Now you're going for classic mono red style burn or are you getting some wild nactal naya burn or uh it's it's still the naya burn list i don't think i'm playing the okay um you just you just want boros charms yeah you the the sideboard needs the white and a tarkus command is just awesome yeah you get this you excited for instant speed landfall right triggers right and standard Ooh, when yeah. zendikar comes out i'm i'm super excited on some your opponent's those, turn some Damn. of those spoilers are awesome like the, the just... five eight for six is going to be one of those oh, cards. Uh, oblivion sower yeah i don't know if it's playable in any like serious format but i'm going to play the heck out of it in, oh in absolutely it's, it's did you did you see the new eldrazi mechanics they spoke that were released today devoid yeah and uh, ingest and ingest yes ingest i'm not excited about I don't think that's and just as a setup exciting. mechanic. If, yeah, I believe it's only going to be printed on small, like little Eldrazi guys, because yeah. like right now it's like two, three. At the moment. At the moment, from what from all just three three Eldrazi's <laughs> that we've seen, right. and just doesn't excite us. Uh, but the cards that interact with it, do. I think. Yeah, I think there are some unique implications. If perhaps a card cares about what it ingests, mm -hmm. you could see some uh, something like a Night Veil Specter type of effect on an ingest creature that could be very interesting yeah. like if something ingests it could get a plus one plus one counter that would be very effective on like a one drop one drop one one oh yeah ingest, ingest one it, it gets counters equal to the cmc of the card ingested things like that <laughs> yeah. oh that might be too good but like if it ingests a card get a plus one plus counter yeah. just flat sort of like a stromkirk noble type yeah. Of thing. yeah i i think so like the exile mm -hmm. mechanic is you know there and there's gonna be cards that make them exile more and then we have things that are going to interact with that because uh the oblivion sour grabs lands but he doesn't care where the exile comes from it's not just yeah. the exile that he causes it's any any land in exile which is nice which is super cool delve is in standard yeah it's which gonna, is it's gonna be sweet that's pretty because people are like oh i'll delve away all my lands well i'll just take them thanks <clears throat> never mind this five eight that i'm yeah. playing it's a five eight that's a big it's that's a, a lot of butt that's a lot of butt that is a rotting mastodon with uh, that has Ooh, been yeah. working out. Mm -hmm. A lot of landfall triggers. If landfall triggers end up mattering enough, I could see that card getting some place. And somewhere. landfall, I believe, has been confirmed. Because um, there's that new landfall card. I game think, of life, game I, two life, or get a plus yes. one counter. I think so. Yeah, pretty sure. It's there is, there, is, there is an enchantment that's 
uh, landfall trigger, and then it's like one of two. Choose things. choose one. Yeah. yeah, it's put a plus one plus one counter on a creature or gain two life or gain two life. I think it's a creature you control too. I'm not sure if that stipulation's there. I mean, oh, I have to put a counter on your creature, or no, I'm gonna gain two life. Yeah, sure. I yeah. mean, yeah. yeah. Oh no, tainted remedy! I lose. Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta put it on there and then Valor stance their guy. I actually had someone side in tainted remedy against me. I, I run a I run a deck that plays many a radiant fountain, oh, and I was dear. sitting at two life, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, so sad. Oh no, I'll just play my full. That forest. reminds me of my favorite way to kill someone in Magic: The Gathering. Okay, the legacy deck, Dream Halls. Uh, are you familiar with? I don't believe so. Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna quickly. D dive away from modern but we will come back in just a second the players are still shuffling up uh the dream halls deck of course the card is the five mana enchantment you can discard a card that shares a color with a spell and you can cast it without paying its mana cost okay uh this is a global effect so everyone in the game gets oh to do this. my you don't care about what your opponent can do essentially all you want to do is discard a card that has a color and cast conflux which of course lets you search up five cards four of them are going to be progenitus one of them is going to be some piece of the combo. And then you just keep discarding Progenitus and get things. And, and get then eventually you're going to cast False Cure. And then uh, you're going to cast... I, I cannot remember what the name of the card is. But you just like False Cure you and then make you gain a bunch of life. Which is not happening because False Cure makes you lose that life. Oh, it looks uh, like Carter is unfortunately having to mull the five. Yeah, that is, that is quite unfortunate. Especially in a game three scenario. Yeah, He's on elves though, so elves can... You can whip up a decent five with start elves, playing sure. some visionaries, and you can get right back up to seven. Some cocos, perhaps as well. Oh. Collected company visionaries is and collected so company nice. is is what he's looking for. You also just need mana, just like mana is good. Yeah, mana and mana. One, good one forest and four elvish. All right, yeah, that's Lanawar a good hand. Elves. He's got two lands. All of them cast spells. Lanawar, Lanawar heritage, and nettle sentinel. Yeah, that seems three. That's a really good hand. He is on the play, I believe. He's set up to oh, make. No, he's uh, on the draw. No, he yes, he's he's on the draw. So that's that's Even also better. a boon. Oh. Island tap vision. Serum visions. Playing the classic serum visions, not the new F and M promo that is currently, uh, for month of August. So we got a few weeks left. Swing by, wasteland for F and M. Get yourself a promo. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. We usually come, have a big. We usually have, Chinese. We usually have a big enough <laughs> big enough turnout that of top eight usually gets one yeah so you don't you don't even have to win you just have to do well there's also like multiple formats you can play mm -hmm. you can get it in draft you can play um, it through modern, modern or or standard or standard we run three uh three events uh, currently I i'm not sure if they're going to continue modern once the pptq season <laughs> rotates to, to limited i assume we will continue to keep running it because it has been fairly popular mm -hmm. you know there's some nights where that fires and and one of the other ones doesn't or it has more than standard it usually has more than standard. I don't, I don't think we've had a night where we haven't fired standard. The night right before regionals was like the only one. In, in most recent memory, they're very similar. Because yeah, a lot of people didn't want to show what they were playing. <coughs> yeah, of course. Keep uh, that secret secret tech for the for the regionals. So here's a cavern of souls. I'm guessing dragons. <laughs> oh no it seems it was on elves ah uh, he picked elves ah close so close it had to be one of the two yeah. well or or beasts good old right tusk good. or ooze or sometimes you have to ooze. say ooze oh we have confirmation that it has in fact named elves mm. no I, I like i like weird. souls on beasts so you drop crater hoof and they're like yeah no the spell appears that you're tapped out and you just point to the land and they're like oh wait so if you have if you have a pointless creature type to name what what are you saying what do, you, what do you go with? Does it have to be a real creature type? Yeah, of course. It has to be a real Riggers. creature Riggers. <laughs> All right. That's a good one. My personal the card, favorite. The card that actually can't work. Um, <laughs> there's a little, little judge, judge it for you. So when cards do actions, uh, it's usually you, the player, does the action. Yeah. So when this yeah, does right. put a thing into play, right? You put it into play. It's, that's why it's under your control right. because you're the one doing it. Well, uh, the way that the rigor is worded, is that it assembles a contraption? Well, yeah. well cards can't make game actions. Yeah. No. Nope. So we'll see what happens if they ever support that creature type, which they said they would. Sure. Probably an un three. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Anyway, creature type for you. Uh, brushwag. 
There is exactly one brush I, wag. I could have sworn you were going to say Homerid, but uh, you got me. No, Homerid, Homerids are good. Homerids are good. Homerids are good. Was it Cepha, Cephaloid, Cephadrum? Cephalid. Cephalid. Cephadrums are from Monster Hunter. Yes, they are. Oh, hmm. No, not I'm, fun, naming not fun times. I'm naming Zenogre. I'm naming Zenogre every oh, time. Gross. What? <laughs> Don't you want a Thunder Wolf? Mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> Blood Moon! He makes, he makes me sad sometimes. <laughs> so now Carter has... Um, Two mountains. Uh, One named elves. Yeah. (laughs) Mountain. (laughs) Mountain of elves. Uh, Of course, the card doesn't actually care what it names, but Mountain has named elves. He's still got green mana because he's got got Elvish Mystic and Lanor Elves. Here's a Heritage Druid to add to the party. Can't tap that one for green card. Mm. That That is unfortunately not how that works. Yeah. So interesting here. He's he's a little bit jammed up. Uh, it opens up the counter magic once Cause, again. Because now he can't, as when it resolves, tap the three elves for more mana. Yeah, no. He's not going to be able to do that. <clears throat> it looks like he's getting the beatdowns. He's just leaving that on the table. Oops, I oh, revealed there's the a card. Forest. Oh, okay. Oh, we had it all. We got there. All right. So this is... Uh, this is opening up the counter magic once again, turning off the cavern. So if he does have something like a cryptic or remand, obviously he can't cast cryptic just yet. He's one blue off of that, but there's Snapcaster Mage looking at a lightning bolt. Yeah. Not interested in having to deal with the heritage here. Just no thank you. <clears throat> Indeed. Bushwag. Favorite spell to flashback, Snappy. Oh, that's close. Um, I think we're gonna cord here. It's cord for two. Yeah, this this is a cord for two. Um, would have liked to see him wait just a second and then cord. Go ahead and cord for. Uh, like, I, I guess he's got to be worried about dying to like a, a twin or whatever. But he's got one more turn, right? So like. If he has a second copy of it, this is fine. He needs to get another permanent so he can go get the Reclamation Sage. But if he's just going to go get a Spell Sky to protect himself, that's like, eh, it's okay. I would I would much rather just wait and go get this Reclamation Sage. Unlock your lands again. <clears throat> the beatdown has effectively stopped. So, like, I don't know. This, this seems like um, trying to fight the tide with your hands. Just... Trying to push back the water of the ocean. Were you a waterbender? No. Oh well, then yeah, no. That's, yeah, that's no. Neither, battle. neither is he. Apparently, he has he has no mana of the blue variety with which to bend. Fair. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks like that was just main phase. Get it in there while he's not got mana to disrupt the spell. It's a fair. Fair way to go about doing things. Here's probe. Jutaxian Probe. Sees another Heritage Druid. Not really too much going on for Carter. Unfortunate that he had him mulligan. Uh, mulligan down the way he did. But, I mean, the Blood Moon has slowed the game down to a crawl at this point, and there is time for him to recoup. So if he, if he top decks something like uh, Collect a Company, he could be right back in it with just... Oh yeah, Coco for days. Just, just the shortest of of hand motions. Just one card onto the table, and he's back in it. Heritage Druid. Can't imagine Joe has anything to say about this. No Exarch and a turn. Good news for Carter. There's a dismember. I believe in Joe's hand, so that's gotta get pointed at this sp- spell skite. The interesting thing about elves is a lot of people were really in on Shaman of the Pact, bringing because it's great in standard. Oh, wow. he's oh, he's gonna he's target gonna, the Heritage Druid. Interesting. He's gonna make him pay the light. He's here. really not interested. 
And the mana ramp. Yeah. I, if I'm Carter, I'm just going to let him have it. Like, I don't need this. I don't think that's important. Yeah, I mean, this he, he was very aggressive in fetching up that spell sky, and I would assume that it's very important to keeping him alive. So just it blocks the Snapcaster. There's, oh, look. <laughs> it's called shot. Collected company right Collected off the top. Company. <clears throat> the lands in Joe's hand. Not a whole lot for him to say about this one. Well, they say mountain. Hmm. Yes, both of them do say mountain. <laughs> There's a scavenging ooze. That's a really good one on this board. Not sure what else he's got in there. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Elvish Archer is a good one. Ooh. Pumping up the other elves, he'll get to untap with it. It makes three green mana currently, which is really effective. Uh, around Blood Moon. Yeah, no, it's, it's it perfect. It's perfect around Blood Moon. Oh, choke. Choke. Oh, wow. Islands don't untap. That's an especially dangerous one for Joe to have to maneuver around. It looks like the game is sort of spiraling out of control for Joe. How well... It looks well... like he had this locked up and then... How well does uh, Tarmo Twin run on uh, Mono Red? Well, he's got to. F <laughs> uh, he's going to need to save that blue mana to cast something. Um, mm. I assume it's going to be a Deceiver Exarch. And then he's going to need a way to get this Spell Sky off the table. And then he's going to need a way to oh. stick a twin and not die between all these things happening and right now. <clears throat> this looks like an attack for several. We'll see if there's any activations. I assume he he is going to activate here. He's got uh, three creatures in his own graveyard, which he can eat now. It's going to use such a house. Mana. I'm going to flashback which spell? Oh, but it's exiled. No, no spells. Yep. <clears throat> Scavenging is does a lot of work in a matchup against Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, bringing it into Modern was such a wonderful decision by Wizards because it used to only be in Legacy because it was mm -hmm. a Commander new card. Commander, only uh, original Commander. Good old Gave Dex. Yep, he was in the, he was in that one, the Guru of Spores. Looks like he's eating two, just two. Yeah, so gains two life. Uh, he should, yes. Because it's gain life, and if it was a creature, you also get a counter. Which I believe means that Joe's going to take six if he's not. Uh... Yup. Now, he still has this mana to float through after combat damage, I believe. So he could eat the Land of War Elf. He's already got a Heritage Root in there anyway, but he could he could if, if he wanted to. Is that correct? No. Uh, <clears throat> mana, both phases and steps ends so if he was he had to pump that before combat damage so once they've done damage all the mana had to empty out between then and the next step of yep. combat okay yep yeah. interesting yep, yep. so yeah there are clarification there yeah. thank five, you five parts of combat beginning yep. of combat attacks blocks damage end of combat yep and if mana is generated in any one of those it can only be used inside of that one. yeah a lot of people forget about end of combat yeah there are things you can do before we leave combat like celestial things, flare things, things are still attackers things are still blockers yeah celestial flare is one of the classic didn't you know maze of Ith just reads reads give your best at creature or vigilance oh yes <laughs> boop, boop, boop. oh yes uh that is that is one of those things people never do but is also quite good uh, looks like there's no green mana available for Carter here, so this Snapcaster Mage is kind of getting in under the radar. Well, al although it's just an Ambush Viper. Uh, and I don't think he has the ability to untap anything. He can probe it. Oh, he can probe, yeah. He's going to have to pay two life for it as well. <clears throat> Yeah, Phyrexian mana is not does not have card not text free. on it. Well, I was saying you can flash it back because it's oh, part correct. of the casting yeah. cost. Yep. It is a mechanic of mana itself. Not There's nothing on the card that says, oh, I use it. Yeah, so it's not mm -hmm. alternate. Because flashback is an alternate cost, which means you can't alternate correct. cost it back. Yeah, out. so Joe kind of locked himself out here. 
Carter with a win off of five. Yeah. Don't get distant yeah. hardened, guys. Like, we, you saw it here. Joe just kind of ran out of gas there. I mean, his, his hand was good. It had a, a blood moon and some spells, and he just threw a bunch of mountains, unfortunately. Uh, in any case, that's going to do it for round two. Um, Carter Norris is going to take his match, and Philip Lauren took his match. Both of them two games to one. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, we're going to take a short break. We will be right back with round three of Modern Mondays at the Wasteland Gaming. See you soon.
Welcome back to round three here at Modern Mondays at Wasteland Gaming. We've got a fun matchup coming. We have Sam on Burn and Jordan on Junk. Or Necra, as I like to call it. Little old school. Oh, yes. Big fan of those old school uh, wedge type names. Yeah. Can, can we name all five? I think we can. Necra, Anna, Dega, Beta, Seda. Seda? No, Seda's not one. Beta's not one. Beta's not one? No. Mm. Raka. Raka. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Good old America. Seda, Seda is one. Seda is a teamer. Or a rug. Or whatever you call it. That is correct. It just flowed off the tongue. That was good. I just fit I was, it in there. You were so close. I was actually just checking to see if you were on your toes. Oh, okay. Well, well played. Got me. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going with. Yeah. All right. So Sam Morgan here on Burn going to be on the play it's a scary place to be facing burn on the play but not a scary turn one Rift play Bolt. in the suspension of Rift Bolt. junk is one of those decks that has a pretty good game plan against uh burn he's yeah, got that's... siege rhinos and he's probably got kitchen finks as well uh <clears throat> sideboard <throat> might have things like obstinate bell it's another one he could have Voice of Resurgence is is also a, a strong card. Oh, voice! If he has access to that as well, it just blocks really, really well. Looks like a fetch here. I'm gonna take him to sixteen. Sam doesn't look to be playing very many creatures. It looks like he, maybe his hand is just not stocked up with them, but. Typically, these decks have Goblin Guides, they have Monastery Swift Spears, Eidolons of the Great Revel. Oh, Eidolon. Oh, baby. You are the reason a Null is in my sideboard. <laughs> a Null's a very, very good card. <laughs> it's sweet. Yeah. Uh, it, that's the one card people just sort of gloss over and just forget is in Modern. There's there's lots of cards like that, and that is that is the one that is most egregiously overlooked. Yeah, I get the Urza art, man. It's so sweet. Mm, indeed. It's still in standard for another month or two. That's true. Is that reprinted in uh, Theros? Theros, yeah. yeah. Mm. People got real excellent in that format. Oh, amazing! People got real salty on pre-release when they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna cast my Heliod, God of the Sun," and you're like, "One mana, a null," and they're like, "Wait, no, no. gross." <laughs> Sorry, your mythic was yeah. countered by my common a for lot of a people, single blue. A lot of people who chose white and got to play the uh, horrendously overpowered white bestow rare uh. celestial something archon, maybe I don't remember. Yeah. Well, I'm like not sure that's the exact three thing, three but... flying first strike yeah. vigil. It just it was it's like a chrome on a stick. A bunch of ham sandwich abilities. <laughs> Boros it just also flies. Yeah. Boros charm. If you can spend the seven mana to drop it and have a creature, yeah, you're probably I mean, in a good spot. Even if the creature isn't there when it resolves, you still have this four four flying first striking <laughs> shenanigans jerk. It's not as bad as was it the chariot of the dawn, the fate reforged. Blah, blah. Yeah, there we we love that format. It was great. It was fun. Looks like uh, Jordan's weathered the first couple turns pretty well here, and he's going to resolve. Finks, a Finks. Although there's a skull crack, so oh. not going to gain that life. Going to go to nine. <laughs> I think I see another skull crack in his hand too. I think Jordan's just dead. Like even if he has a good hand with Finks into Rhino, I love skull crack. He's still just sizzling at the end of this game. <laughs> Yep, he's he's got his fourth land, so this is a uh, this is threatening to unleash two burn spells at the end step and then untap and finish him off. Hmm. So at the start of Theros, mono red in standard was a big deck because yeah. you had the fanatic monkeys. Like people were really in on it. I played that deck. It's super fun. I played, a lot. Um, a lot of people didn't play Skullcrack like uh, in the board. And yeah, that's we, wrong. We, yeah, that's absolutely wrong. wrong. So we went to a, like a game day or something. Yeah. Uh, and we were practicing the deck, and one of my friends was running it, and we're like, oh my dude, why aren't we? Run, let's run Skullcrack. Um, not only does it get around Master of Waves shenanigans, but we're just like, oh, so people yeah. are just like, oh, I'm going to gain a million life. And you're like, no, you're going to take three. So Look at birds, thinks again. Oh, it's got the double Skullcrack skull here. Crack. Just, just, I'll show you these. I have three Woo! of them. Now, Sam might be on an unorthodox list here. I don't think that the deck normally plays three main deck Skullcracks. <laughs> I don't know that most of them have three in anywhere. Like, you might have one or two in your sideboard. 
Speaking of sideboard skull cracks, going back to what you were saying earlier, mm -hmm. Chris Boozer uh, made us an excellent list right after Theros came out, which was Red Devotion. Just mm -hmm. straight up red. Um, Foundry Street mm -hmm. into... What was the two drop for that? Yeah, like... I know the three drop play, was Phoenix. You could play, you could play Foundry Street, Jensen. Um, we played, like, a Fire Drinker. I think it was, like, three Fire Drinker Satyrs mm -hmm. and three uh, Rakdos Cacklers. Oh, Rakdos Cacklers. Yeah. And then there were, like, fourth oh. copies of both in the board. Um, and it was, like, a really interesting setup because the only Devotion payoffs were, like, one Porphyros and the Fanatics. Fanatics. Yeah, like, the, the Fanatics of of uh of mogus were incredible <clears throat> yep thank you jeff i'm getting interesting messages from him about the sideboarding uh looks like more skull cracks for sam he just has nine of them he just has nine of them in his list that's, we're that's, joking he's, he's got four he's probably <laughs> yeah he's probably <laughs> only got four um if he's playing the the unorthodox burn list he's just got no creatures he's just looking to you know deal his opponent 18 damage or so yeah i'm just gonna point six spells at your face until you're dead don't you love formats where people don't start at 20 well, as, sure a, as, a, as a burn I'm player sure sam does yes uh I, yeah, I like formats where the life totals change i like when life uh, is a resource is, life is a resource it can be used to both prolong your game plan and or just like advance your game plan like you can spend life to make the board presence more for yourself or you can you know like forego some board presence and gain some life how did you like in the last pro tour we saw people playing tassigers to combo out with their feed the clans <sighs> i i am not a fan of a card that literally just says gain life and no other text no, of, of course but just the sideboard tech into those burn decks they're like oh okay well now i'm at 30 and then i'm gonna tassiger it back I'm at 40. I'm at 50. Like <laughs> It's it's those ridiculous. Are, those are those are such silly situations to have happen and when you get them off they're awesome. Um and they're not awesome because you're gaining a bunch of life, but you're getting a bunch of extra turns which means draw steps. So you're actually just drawing cards, <laughs> which is which is awesome. Like a lot of my favorite uh card effects in Magic are things like survival cash which gain life and draw cards oh, and yeah. Sphinx's revelation and things like that. It's like not necessarily life gain by itself, but things that do other things that advance the game or draw cards or make large things and also gain life. There's a new, uh, it's like if you just tap life gain onto any of my favorite spells, they makes them way better. <laughs> There's a new white card that just came out in origins. It's uh gain angel blessing <coughs> gain for life draw card. I think it's a bit too expensive to play though. Yeah, probably, but that's the type of, that's the type of thing that that's, I'm that's what you like. Yeah, in the market for that. So are you big on Thrag Tusk? Because it was just, it's a pretty sweet creature, has a good leave the battlefield effect, but also gains five. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I played a lot of Thrag Tusks. Good, yeah. old, good old swaggy. I didn't ever get the chance to play Thrag Tusk and Sphinx's Revelation because I was, I was not playing standard at that point. And it took me a long time to find out, you know, what the draw was to playing mm -hmm. Sphinx's Revelation. I'm like, well, I don't like playing control decks very much because X, Y, or Z. And it was just excuses i was feeding myself depriving myself actually of a great time because every color of magic is when, wonderful and then when when i decided to finally go in i went deep. way off the deep end yeah <laughs> i went i went in on the control deck that's like i'm literally just gonna sit here and sphinx's revelation every turn and i'm gonna crack this elixir of immortality every turn uh, i'm see, gonna gain 20 you can have your seems elixir. i'm at 10 mana i'm gonna flashback a sphinx's revelation yeah no like it, it was a little ridiculous. That deck, uh, just, you could ignore what your opponent was doing for the most part, and if they ever got too out of hand, you just supreme hurt them. Yeah. And yeah. it's just nothing you can do about it. Like, your control opponent, if he was playing Esper, he could, like, he could cast an Aetherling and resolve it, which was normally game in Control Mirror. But, like, <laughs> in, in that sort of situation, he can attack you for eight every turn, but you're gaining more than that every turn, so he's not actually gaining any ground. He's just decking himself. Yeah. He's slowly. I was big on the uh, Esper Drown Yard during mm. that time. Although, mm. I saw a lot of Bant mm, decks yes. running the Resto Angel into Thrag Tusk, and mm -hmm. you're just like, oh, mm -hmm. seems seems really great. Recent uh, PPTQ winner Chi Hoi Yim was playing a deck that had Codex Shredder 
uh, which could like mill himself and then get the elixir. Mm-hmm. So he was playing just like the most inevitable form of the most inevitable deck in the. In the you in will the die in yeah, eighty it was, turns. It was just, it was the, just the, amazing. The blue white control deck known only as Fun Police. Yeah, he was he was super super duper Fun Police. Looks like Jordan's mulliganing once mm. again. Highly unfortunate. Uh, if he does find a good hand here, you know, like a turn two Kitchen Finks is the type of thing that can, you know, give him enough life to give him enough turns to get back in this game and swing it back in his favor. He just needs like, you know, like a, a Noble Hierarch into, or a Birds of Paradise into, um, into Finks, into like either Finks or Rhino. And then he's he's just pretty well set. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> Fetch lands. We probably have to do. I see lands and spells. There's a verdant catacombs. Oh, there are the creatures. Got one guide. Sam just. So here's the trigger. Looking to draw Jordan some lands. Effectively unmulliganing him. Crack our fetch. Mm -hmm. Down to 17 after damage here. Perhaps. We'll see if he actually takes this or not. Yeah, it looks like he's not shocking himself. That's a neat trick. You get to see what your top card is from Goblin Guide, and you have a fetch land to rebuy if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. You just get a fresh look at another card. Fortunately for him... It was a temple garden. It was just it draw a card. Yep, he just doesn't have to make the decision. I think I see an idol on in Sam's hand. That'd be a powerful turn two play. Mm-hmm. Goblin Guy is one of those cards that when you're like you're, you're very new at Magic, you see it and you're like, why would you ever run this? No, oh, yeah. Why, why would fair. you do this? It, mm-hmm. You're giving your opponent advantage, and it's well, yes, that you are. You're giving them information if. Usually information they can't really use. You're giving yourself information. You're also taking but more importantly, away their life points. More importantly, you are gaining card advantage by killing them before they cast their cards. Yeah, the, the philosophy of fire, if if that's what you're ascribing to, you don't actually care how many lands you give them. Yeah. Because so long as, you know, if Goblin Guide ends up being one card, four damage, you're happy. <laughs> if it does more than three, up like if it if it hits them once you're like all right face value we're okay face one value, one okay. one mana for two damage one card is is fine it's a, it's not great but it's fine and then <clears throat> so there's a fetch George's gonna go to sixteen and then if it does any more damage than that just bonus just more value just bonus yeah you want every every card in your deck to be doing about two and a half damage so scavenging ooze is a a nice play here. Um, and it looks like Sam does not have like a Searing Blood or a Searing Blaze to. You block here? Oh yeah, absolutely. I would, I would definitely throw this under the bus. Um, like, you can hope that it sticks around, but there's always just the chance that it's gonna die when you start activating it, and there's nothing in the graveyard for it to eat. Yeah, and there we see. I, I like this play. This mm-hmm. is good. He gets to see that there's a voice on top. And we're going to crack a fetch. Sam's probably shocking himself to find either green or red mana. White, excuse me. Green or white mana, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Can't imagine this is anything but Eidolon. Oh, he's got another copy of Idol in his hand. Oh, wow. Ugh. This could get dicey. There's a Shock going to 14, and a Kitchen Finks staying at 16. Actually, no, he's going to take two he's from gonna the trigger. He's going to take two from the trigger. Correct. So he's actually still at 14. Reasonable. Yes. Yes, indeed. I mean, this is a good sequence of cards from Jordan on five. So I... How do you try to pronounce hybrid mana symbols in a cost? You, know, you get like one UU, you, you see one like green, white, green, white. Yeah, like GW, GW. Yeah. Green, we've, white, green, we've, white. we've started doing uh, guilds. It'd be like, yeah, one Slesnia, Slesnia. Yeah, I mean, that's that's also reasonable. I like doing that. There's a trigger. Sam's going to take two off of his own Eidolon, but now spells that cost three or less hurt. 
like a lot. Like they hurt a lot. They take four. But you should get charred C every time. Siege Rhino, Siege Rhino, Siege Rhino. No. I mean, Siege Rhino is the thing you want to be casting here. <clears throat> if he had a siege rhino, I'd just attack. Battle. Did you say if you have the land and the siege rhino, you just attack here? Just let's go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope that you trade and offer this up, and then I'm gonna cast the siege rhino, and I'm gonna win the race. Because if you cast spells, you're gonna take four, four, buddy. That's a lot. It does not look like he has that. No. We see voice that uh, path. lingering souls. Oh, lingering. He's probably thinking about pulling the trigger on that. <coughs> yeah, I mean he he goes at ten, but he has two flyers. Lingering souls is so sweet. There's a path there too, so he could he could be thinking about trying to resolve two spells, like path one of those guys and then play a voice. Oh, he doesn't have two white, so you can't do that. So here's a voice take four. Ooh. That is, that is painful. Yeah, okay. Ugh. Ugh. And then an attack. I don't know if I like that attack. Yeah. Like, I guess holding it back on defense isn't great if Sam has one of his uh, million effects. <laughs> That allows him to prevent your life which, gain. Like, which you just copy the... of Lightning Bolt yeah. or its friends? Like, you just, it, he's I, just going to skullcrack you when you block. Yeah. He may just be trying to get the life total down, so he makes it a harder choice for him to fire his spells off. Because now Lightning Bolt does three, but you take four. Yeah, it's like not worth casting. At and this he's point. only at 12, so he can only cast three spells, and he'll die before the third one resolves. Maybe he's just trying to make a math. I don't know. Yeah, I mean... This is still, like, not a great attack for Sam by any stretch. Although now he's not going to take a million from all of his own spells. Jordan took two here down to eight. So... <clears throat> he gets on tap with a, um, a Pokemon token. Which is a 2-2, two -two, of course. Equal the number of creatures he controls. The elemental left behind by voice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's Boros Charm. So he'll go to 10, and Jordan will go to 4. Yeah. I wonder if that was just a pass from Jordan. Looks like it was. Interesting. Hmm. Well, you have to attack with something there. I don't think leaving back both blockers is actually doing any, any good. I mean, your life total is far too low. I think we're going to see a Lightning Helix. Yeah, that's what that is. So he's going to gain effectively one. He'll take two from the trigger. And three. And gain three. And Jordan will go to one. And then Skullcrack. I think, yeah, I think we're done with the game here. Yep, that is. Yeah, so Sam has, uh, he's won this match, two games to zero. Um, we're going to see what sort of games are on backup for us. But this one, pretty straightforward. Just uh, three color deck, painful mana base, fetch lands, shock lands. Uh, and then Sam. Ooh, Knight Sam, of the Reliquary. Sam just had good burn spells. I like night. Nice, I love nice night. Interesting. Did you know that uh, on Moto recently, night was bugged to let you sacrifice any permanent to, to go fetch up a land. What? Yeah. No. Uh, recently on Magic: The Gathering online. Wait, have they fixed Ponder yet? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't actually play Moto, but I heard about this glitch, and it was too sweet not to talk about. Apparently, someone could. Uh, someone was like trying out all of the different things you could do uh, with the latest update for Magic Origins, and Knight was letting you sacrifice like lands that weren't forests, Force or planes. Or planes, and then he just started testing it to see how far he could break it, and then he was able to sacrifice enchantments, artifacts, planeswalkers, just anything he wanted to go get a land. So Knight is super bugged. Uh, I don't know if it's been fixed yet, but uh, last, last I heard, you were 
able to do some pretty interesting things with that that card. Yeah, because I know the Ponder Bug has been around for I don't want to say years, but I think it's been years. Where yeah. it was, you would say, "Do you want to shuffle?" And you say, "No, I want to keep it on top." And it goes, "Okay, keep it on top. Shuffle." Yeah, <laughs> and just shuffles shuffle anyway. It, yeah. Rude. <laughs> I remember uh, in one of the videos that LSV made, Channel Fireball. I think he he was talking about that, yeah. and he was like playing. I think he was playing a legacy deck, and he he was he fell victim to that, and he had like pause the video, figure out what happened, and then be like, "Oh, Ponder's still bugged." <laughs> He's like, "What? No, wait, I had lethal yeah, on top yeah. of my deck." Like, yeah, what? I needed, I needed, actually needed that card to win. I needed to not shuffle there. Thank you, thank you, Watsy, thank you, Moto. Well, at least I don't think the game still crashes when you triple O ring anymore. Oh God, that is one of the funniest videos. If no one's ever seen it, it's on YouTube somewhere. Um, try and find it. But he 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 ends up in a situation where. So the way, if you're not familiar with the triple O-ring shenanigans, mm -hmm. uh, so Oblivion Ring comes in, exile permanent. When it leaves, the permanent comes back in. Um, yep. You stick an O-ring, it doesn't matter what's on under it, yeah, or think, maybe it I goes think away. In, in this particular situation, um, there was an O-ring that was hiding a Planeswalker, mm -hmm. and then there was a second copy of the Planeswalker. And this is back when the old legend rule did away with both of them. Right. So when so, he O-ringed the original O-ring, both the Planeswalkers were gone. Yeah. So and then, then you there have, was just another O-ring is the only legal target. So, so yeah. one of them was hidden, and the other two were like targeting each other, and they went through an endless yeah. cycle. So the normal thing is you need three. Yeah. Is you, you have, you have an O-ring. It has whatever. that The thing gets rid of. You then O-ring the first O-ring. So now you have an O-ring tucked under an O-ring. Then when you cast a third O-ring, <laughs> the only legal target is the O-ring with one tucked. Yep. That gets exiled. The third, the first hidden O-ring comes, comes back. back. The only legal target is the new third one, which then exiles the second one. So it creates an infinite loop, and yep. none of these are May triggers. Yep. Mandatory must target something, must exile something, and you effectively soft lock the game. Yeah. It is It, it is just a draw. Yep. Yeah. The rules of magic are it's a draw. But the rules of Moto are crash. Much and, more. And I think purge your hard drive and set it on fire. No, so Moto just like had no idea what to do in this situation. Like LSV intentionally made it happen to see what just like what just, would happen. Just to be the the kid with the magnifying glass, just to see what would happen. Uh, and so what Moto, what Moto did was pause for a very long time and then replay the entire game in front of him as though it were on fast forward, and then come to the same conclusion and then crash, <laughs> and then repeat the process. Until there was like some error message. And yeah, stack think, overflow. At, at that point, yeah. At that point, it was just like stack overflow. Moto doesn't know what you did, but you broke it. That was the, it's the generic, you broke Moto. Thanks. That was the thing. I believe um, he actually got an award for that. There, there's a plaque, or I believe it's a picture, it's a giant oblivion ring with the picture of Luis's face from, from that event that people made that for, for him. Oh, and he deserves it. He does, yeah. Being the gentleman that he is. I'm uh, not sure what's going on just yet. I do not think we have secured a backup feature match. Um, Table Spotter is still MIA, though, so we'll keep you guys for just a little bit longer. Out in the wild. Yeah, so we, we talked a little bit earlier about if there were a tournament this weekend, what would you play? I My short answer was Burn. I think that this match is a perfect example of why you want to play Burn. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of three-color decks. There's a lot of decks that are fast and loose with their mana. They deal themselves damage, and it's not terribly difficult uh, to come up with the requisite amount of damage to win the game. Um, I think some people are a little soft in their sideboard to burn as well. They're trying to beat some of those harder to interact with combo decks, like the Grish Grishol brand deck um, with Infect, Twin, things like that. You, they've, they've just bigger fish to fry, and then burn just comes through and says, oh, sorry, you forgot about me. I'm here. Deal with it. Oh, did you fetch and shock on your first two turns? Oh, that was bad. Poor choice. Poor choice. Poor choice. In any case, what would you play if you were? Uh, I'm not too sure. I'd, I'd have to kind of take a deep look at the meta. Because if I'm, if I'm really trying to compete, I'm either going to do one of two things. I'm going to either go for the deck that I think is in one of the best positions to win mm -hmm. and that I can pilot well. Um, yeah. I, I need to have enough time to put practice in. Like if it's something like burn, you know, go through the motions. But if it's like one of the really complicated combo decks, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in the time, or I'm gonna try maybe something that's a little under the radar that might just like get people. Mm, sure. Yeah. Um, so so more like a meta deck. Uh, I like affinity. Um, I, think I was just gonna mention affinity is a great choice as well. Uh, affinity is real strong, and as we've heard many times on screen, I just the turn one. Okay, five out of seven. 
permanence in play. Just, it just feels right. It's explosive. And it requires specific key cards. Like, it, it requires must-see yeah. answers out of it, sideboards. And people people will have them because affinity has been so strong historically. But sometimes they'll be like... Because sometimes... Oh, it looks like we're getting a backup match coming. Sometimes people will put a card or two in their sideboard as a nod to infinity. Yeah, it looks like we are getting a backup. Because well, anyway, so people will put like a a card or two in their sideboard as a nod to infinity, but that's not necessarily enough. Like running one copy of Shatterstorm is is good, but the odds of you getting that one card might might not be enough, especially because you're now playing around affinities, uh, affinities sideboard as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. so, sorry for that. We are getting our information in for the next round. Yeah. Looks like we will be having a Abzan versus Burn going to game three. Uh, on Abzan, we have Brian Wilson. And on Burn, we have Robert McGinnis. Now, I believe Robert was playing the Naya Burn last week. So we'll yeah. see if that's the same list. He was, uh, he was hunting up some interesting choices for the mana base. Like, I think he was asking for Copperline Gorgeous and... Uh, fast, land, fast lands are good and burn. Yeah, I'm not sure what else. So we'll see if he's running the Nakatl still. I don't know if I would play uh, Copperline Gorge and Nakatl. Yeah, that seems a little greedy. Mm, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. We got Robert on play. And once again, uh, both players have won a game. We are going to game three. Don't even have to fix the archetypes. Ooh. Woo! <laughs> Perfect. It's the little things. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy the little things, everyone. Yeah, we we're easily amused if you hadn't noticed. Um, so just just keep that in mind. Have fun. Yeah. Got to celebrate where you can. Speaking of celebrating, I believe today is your birthday, is it not, Nate? You know what? I was hoping we would get through coverage without mentioning it, but you're right. <laughs> I am a day older. Uh, well, not just a day older, a year older, specifically. <laughs> I mean, you are a day older. I'm always yesterday. a day older. That's that's what it feels like. It doesn't feel too much different. Yep, but we are we are the birthday boy. That's the hat we wear today. Well, congratulations to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Made it. We did it, Got Obama. There. I was waiting. I was waiting for the right time. <laughs> it's like I can't do it in the first two rounds because I wanted to make him think I forgot. <laughs> yeah, you gave me the false hope, the false cure. <laughs> What's one of your favorite cards? Yeah, it's, it's that happened. All right, All right we're right, good. Robert's, Robert's <laughs> shocking himself off of this fetch going to seventeen. We'll see what he's playing. Probably a Swift Spear, or perhaps Goblin Guide. Yeah, there's a goblin guy. Died. Battle. Trigger. What's on top? Looks like a uh, one swipe peak. One swipe What a traitor. Why is he always giving cards to people? It's because he's nice. Goblin guy. It's like have a card and yeah. three lightning bolts to your face. Oh, well, that that's reasonable. <clears throat> there's that heath. Ooh, pass back. No, no turn one play. But um, it's not unheard of. <clears throat> I'm not sure. He may have picked up two cards there. It's a simple fix. Yes, of course. Oh, I think he had to discard uh, to hand size. Oh. Ooh. Double triggers here. Reveal the top. Draw it if it's a land. Reveal the top. There's a Verdant Catacombs into the hand. And the second one. And second trigger. Maybe going to... Oh, he's going to crack in response to the second trigger. Let's go find our land before we resolve anything else. All right, here we go. Yep. <clears throat> There's a Temple Garden. Just going to throw it in tapped, which means that we will be seeing this four damage come through. And second trigger. 
Huzzah! I think that was a path to exile. It was a new promo path to exile. Maybe. Could be wrong. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get it. I was looking away, of course. Looks like Robert, uh, no second land. Who needs a second land when you have a second goblin guide? Right. More important than land drops. If you fill your opponent's hand with land, they can't cast spells? Wait. It depends on how. It depends on how. <laughs> method, method is Me important. Here. Method is important yeah. here. All right, so here's a fetch land. Ooh. Down to 12 already. Scary. Walking a fine line. And in general, being on the draw uh, when you are playing against Burn is very scary. Basic swamp. Indeed. I hope he's not going to try and cast this Voice of Resurgence. I'm not sure what other two drops he's got in his deck. If he had a Lingering Souls, he could have discarded that to hand size. Oh, he, no, he's got an Abrupt Decay in his hand. That's what mm -hmm. it is. He fetched the swamp because of Abrupt Decay. And it looks like he's just going to try and take out one of these targets well that's interesting because now i'm not sure which one you want to hit because in the future i think if robert draws a land the so this is going to have spells after spells yeah i don't think you can afford to take well, there's a kitchen thing so maybe you can I, i'm not sure actually what you do here you're abrupt king something <clears throat> i think you're conserving life total yeah, yeah. I, life total conservation is very important he's just going to untap and play this kitchen thinks Probably staying at even life total, maybe gaining one off of a fetch or something. We'll see what's in his hand. Should go to nine from that. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeedy. Mm -hmm. Still no second land for Robert. Very unfortunate. If he draws a second land here, uh, he'll be in business. There's a basic forest that's going to allow him to solve the Finks, go up to 11. That was a strong play. Now he can... <clears throat> Don't believe that was a land either. Looks like we're just so uh, he can... getting oh. in there. Trigger, that's a Lingering, Lingering Souls. Soul. Lingering Souls is a very good one here. What do you block here? He can only cast a spell. I I think I'm blocking Swift Spear. Yeah. Because yeah. Have... Swift Spear can get up in toughness, and if he points it at the creature, well, then it doesn't matter what you blocked anyway. Yeah, you you know he's going to. And there's the lightning bolt. Yeah, there's there's the bolt. You know he's going to block something because he's not just going to take three. And you know that Robert is going to yeah. use his mana because he doesn't look like his body language just suggests that he doesn't have a second land. So he's going to cast something on his turn, most likely. Then the Finks comes back in with persists, goes back to ten. Yep. So effectively, kind of staying at the same life total. Actually, no, he should, sorry, he should be at 8 because he took 2 from the guide that wasn't blocked. Yeah, so he should, he should have stayed at basically the same. Yeah, stayed at 8. Because 3 to the face brought him to 8, and then he... Yeah, yeah. after, after yeah, the bolt. Yeah. Alright, we're all good. Yeah. Ah, all right, all right. yeah, we're fine. <laughs> we'll it's we'll it's get fine. there one day. We'll get there one day, Internet. Lingering souls. Well, we have tokens for those, sir. I'm sure we have spirit tokens. See if our table spotter's on it. Hey, look, another Back Swift up. Spear. Backup Swift Spear. <clears throat> Trigger. Slaughter Pact. Ooh. It's a reasonable one. It is taking an in, just about an entire turn to cast, but plenty of creatures. No short of no shortage of creatures from Robert this game. Despite his uh, mana issues. <sighs> Well, so he's he's tapped out. So do you, so Finks is now what a two one. Uh, correct. And he can so you can double block one of these creatures, block with the Finks other. Yep. And he's just gonna wipe the board. Yeah, he's gonna trade. I'll, he's gonna trade Spirit for that. I, I don't know if I like that attack from Robert, honestly. Like I don't. You're not getting anything out of it, to tell the truth. Like I guess it's kind of scary if you don't attack with both, uh, and he like plays a Township or something. Yeah, Township's going to um, But he's still not really in a racing situation. It just it lets you rebuy the Persist trigger on the We're, on the Finks. We have a fetch mm -hmm. here. It does buy you time 
to I, I guess draw like, another land. Yeah, clearing the board is like it's it's pretty good here for Robert because if he's know, if he's got another land, if he gets another land, he's probably got the burn in hand to do oh, seven abs, to his face. Absolutely. So Brian's buying time. Up, Brian's just got to come up with some way to end the game before Robert finds the mana to kill him. Yeah. <clears throat> Assuming Robert's hand is not just clogged with two mana spells, um, if another land should be a game. Not immediately, but maybe over the course of two turns it should be a game. Playing something like an Eidolon immediately would also be very, very good, effective at bringing that uh, situation into fruition. There's a voice, which is not, it's not a great one, but it is pressure. So I like this voice in the flashback. Yeah, I mean this is this is like a reasonable board presence. It's five a turn. Um, probably swinging in for one. Yep. So Robert down to sixteen. Suspend a Rift Bolt. I like that he puts the die on top of his library. He should have a die on the card yeah. for the suspension as well. But he, I, 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 as like a reminder. Putting, I like putting the reminder on the <laughs> on the top of the deck as well. As I say that, he immediately takes it off, though. Well, you have to have uh, a counter on the actual suspended card. Of course. Because there's plenty of dice over there. You it, it is actually a missed trigger if you don't put the... Because there's well, a trigger that... Mm -hmm. suspends it mm -hmm. and the trigger mm -hmm. that does the counter stuff yep. and the way suspend work is very complicated uh mechanically it's very easy to understand when you're doing it oh take counter off cast it okay got it but there's a lot of there's a lot of fun things you can do like you can stifle the, the trigger off of the the cast it for free trigger when it runs out of counter so it just stays permanently exiled it still has suspend which is the funny part oh boy we may have some more souls coming in Ooh. here <clears throat> we're gonna flash it back immediately I think we are. Yeah, we are. All right, so that's a that's a hefty board position. Brian, I guess he just doesn't have any life gain, so he's just gonna. We we have to attack Robert and team, team win this. We have to win this race, yeah. So here is five. Here is at you. <clears throat> Take you to four. I assume if he draws a land, Boros uh, charm. The Boros charm has got to be there in his hand. I don't believe he has it. I think he just... Uh, this is an attack for nine. It's not lethal yet. No, but, but it, it drops a Gavany. But just bolt you. Bolt you to one. Take you to one. That means Kitchen Finks is not enough to save you. He, of course, smartly does it on his turn so that there's not... Another, a, another token. Another token made. How happy would you be to draw Gavany and just boom? Gavany, Gavany would be game. It would be very good. Winning a game against Burn at one life is is like achievement unlocked right is that a bajuka bug oh my all that graveyard's gone bajuka bird bazooka bug <laughs> whoa now kabam all right so if he attacks with everything i don't i don't believe it's correct to attack with everything because it's not lethal and if he's got a follow-up Okay, so here's here's Smiter and so no, okay, he has he has he has other things. All right, that's okay. fine. Yeah. I think that's it. He's not playing that's more fair. than. All right, <clears throat> Robert says top of the deck, please. Because any fetch like even attacking for that nine puts him to two, so a fetch land is still not turned off. Go go goblin guide. Goblin guide, get him. I I assume this will get blocked here. It would be a. Path. Path him. A slaughter pack, sure. He says go. All right. I don't, I don't know if I slaughter packed here. Yeah. I feel like I... I mean, I, I understand that. You're, Block, you're, blocking you're, is, you're styling out here. Had it. I mean, we knew he had it. He, yeah, we he did reeled it. it to the Goblin Guide. Yeah. Deck you. But I would just block, block with my 3 Attack three. with my 0-1 Noble Hierarch as well. Wow. There's a, there's a copper line. He just needed anything. He's also got Flame Javelin. Wow. Just no other one damage or one mana spells in his hand. He played all of his one mana spells, and he played many of them. It was almost enough. <laughs> he would, That was uh, 23 damage, just about. I mean, some of it was obviously Brian on his lands, but he ganked four from that Finks, and then yeah. uh, the rest of it, Robert, 
he put in honest work with goblin guides and by lightning bolts. Scott almost got work. there on one land. Wow. A little bit That's, unlucky. He's got to feel like. <clears throat> but there it is. Junk. Uh, this time around. Takes it. Takes it. Over burn. Two games to one. As opposed to our other match where we saw burn take it two games to zero. Uh, so two sides of the coin here. I think Junk typically has a better burn matchup. The last uh, game. Yeah, if, very if you're playing like a black green deck. Especially oh. if you are actually <clears throat> running Siege Rhinos. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you can be like, okay, turn three, Finks, turn four, Rhino. That five, and that's at least five, assuming the Finks gets exiled or something. Yeah, absolutely. It's five, five, five brings you back where you can like normal 20, and that's with you aggressively mm -hmm. shocking yourself. Yeah. And then you stick a second copy of either of those cards, and it's well, you're at 23. And those are aggressively costed creatures. Like, they also yeah. attack quite yeah. well. Four five of trample seems a three two that doesn't die quite right. Yeah, like it's like, just not good at dying. It attacks. Okay, you block it. It comes back as a blocker. Yeah, like, and also gains two again. Yeah, there, so. there's nothing that you can really profitably block unless you've got like four lands, four burn spells in hand, and a swift spear on the board, and yeah. that, that poison you've already won because yeah, you just go bolt, 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 bolt. The, okay, my five six. You the, know the best draws require no interaction. You just Yahtzee, Yahtzee. or blackjack if you yeah. prefer with cards. How, so obviously drawing goblin guide was not great there but imagine drawing the other rift bolt and be like hey oh, no. <laughs> lethal lethal you on my next turn oh no. oh no yeah so brian wilson achievement unlocked win a game against burn at one life at one life at yeah. one life we'll have to give him his uh his club membership card shortly after this shortly after this speaking of shortly after this we're gonna take a break for just a little while and then we'll return <laughs> with our final round of modern mondays here at the, the wasteland. wasteland. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome back to the fourth and final round of Modern Monday at the Wasteland. Modern. Yep. Uh, once again, Nathan Satterfield joined by... Brad Vanslake. Yep. Uh, uh, we have an awesome one here for you. Grant Christopher is playing Merfolk and Leon Hill, the kid, playing Deathburn. 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 Uh, it's a red-black aggro deck that Leon Hill is known for. I believe um, the, the point is to burn them to death. Yeah. I mean, he plays black aggressive creatures... Uh, he's also playing. Um, he's also playing some some burn spells and some some interesting red cards. Um, I think I see a backwards card in his hand. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, we are ready to start. We're gonna let them know, and they will get underway. Looks like both players are. Oh sure sure sure. Yeah, I think we're gonna. <clears throat> We are going to see what's going on here. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Just communicating with our table spotter to make sure that we are ready to watch them play. Got the bird's eye view. Grant's going to lead it off with an Aether Vial. Ooh. Uh, classic, classic fish start. Allows you to drop a one drop and still animate and bash in. Where is he? Uh, spreading seas. Yeah, so Spreading Sea is here, the turn two play for Grant. He's just ticking up the Aether Vial, waiting until it gets to a relevant value. And two is two is probably king. Two and three are where it tends to stay. He does have a four drop uh, in Master of Waves. Looks like we have a, a proxy here for Leon Hill. It's a Black Cleave Cliffs. Yeah, all right. It, it might be a Mana Confluence no, at it, the moment. Oh, no, it's actually a Mana Confluence. <clears throat> Deathburn. Deathburn on camera exclaims someone walks in the door. Everyone's super excited to see Leon doing what he does best. So yeah, this, this Mana Confluence is the card that is officially being played here. He's going to take one. No no proxies actually allowed here at Modern Mondays. No, not, not even right, a little. So here's, here's a Silvergill Adept revealing. Silvergill Adept is going to draw him a card. That card, of course, costs a whole lot more if you don't reveal it. Yeah, it's like three more? Yeah. And it is a cast trigger, so if it's put into play with an Aether Vial, uh, it is considered to be not cast mm -hmm. and just comes into play and draws you a card. Yeah, because the draw is not on cast. It's on ETB. That's correct. So here's going to take another one here. It looks like a three drop. Oh, maybe not. <clears throat> Combat, Diagraph Ghoul, getting in there. Eighteen to nineteen. Okay, tick up. We're gonna leave one at two and leave and tick up the other Aether Vial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh one needs to stay on two right now i think next turn so there's a uh what is that it, it's the land where you have yeah. to reveal if you reveal a merfolk it's, it's it doesn't reveal cycle. it doesn't tap Correct. it doesn't come in tapped um, master of waves it's like marrow something I'm not not quite sure but anyway here's here's a master of waves devotion Trigger, six uh yep six because of the spreading seas is the, the mm -hmm. last pip for devotion and then here's an attack for four so leon finds himself on the wrong end of a large board of elemental tokens 
looks like he's just going to take it. And it is six damage here. Shoot for 13. I think we are going to game two now. Looks like he didn't have a way to answer all yeah, of those he, two one elementals. He didn't have... Looks like he was cut off red. That spreading seeds looked pretty good. Um, and then from that point, it was master waves just just taking everything. Yep, 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 yep. Master waves taking over there. That was, that was a lot of devotion. Yeah. To tell the truth. I mean... Un if he didn't have... I mean, if you don't have an answer to the master waves to get rid of all those elementals... Right. That's just the elementals, uh, 12 damage. Un unmolested, that card gets out of hand. It's just... Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Like, It's it's a bit too much. Um, Leon got off to a bit of a slow start. He did have his um, Diagraph Ghoul, but not on turn one. It was, yeah. it was a, little bit, a little bit late. By then, Grant had already set up. He had established an Aether Vial, and then he was yeah. able to... Diagram. Effectively use a bunch of cheap, cheaping, cheap mana, cheap cheating in creatures. Yeah. Ugh. Got out of hand quickly. Diagraph Ghoul used to be like the turn one play for so long, mm -hmm. and and in a couple decks uh, during the the reign of Innistrad. Yes, it's 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 nice to see that card again. I had a lot of I built a blue black zombie deck. Innistrad's when I first got into Magic, so you know everyone does the the first deck, which is like oh pick my favorite creature type and build a deck around that. There were. Uh, there were two very competitive zombie decks. There was like a week where blue black was better than black red, but for the most part, I think black red was like the that was yeah. that was actually um, story time. All right. This is this is the inception, the, the time period when uh, Leon Hill first discovered the black and red, the death burn, the, the love for the death burn. Yeah, I uh, I think the black red zombies deck was around the same time as Cobblade was waning. Uh, it was a deck that was very, very, very good at beating everything but Valkyrie. You could beat everything but Valkyrie. Rug was a buy. Um, you had an exceptional matchup, I believe, also against like all of the rest of the field. I think you're fifty-fifty with Cobblade, which is about as much as you could ask. Um, and then, like, you have uh, some sacrifice outlets. You have Calastria Highborn to just drain them out. And this is this is when Leon. This, this is Enter Leon Hill. <laughs> Starts playing this deck, gets a lot of success, and then he just continues to improve. In, and then as, Innistrad a, as a Magic comes player, out. Innistrad comes out. And it just get, gets more support. Yeah. Um, and then later on, when the Return Ravnica block comes out, you get Spike, Spike Jester. And oh. the, the, the entire Rakdos guild is just Leon Hill to the T as a Magic player. So he is continuing his red, black, death burn legacy here. Cards don't rotate out of standard in, and in modern. modern. So yeah. this is just—they're the, always good. This is the essential death burn all stars, uh, piloted by none other than Leon Hill. Grant, uh, <clears throat> Grant is something of a connoisseur of the modern format. Mm -hmm. I've seen him play many, many decks. This uh, this format, he's played. Um, well, this is the first time I've actually seen him pick up Merfolk, but he's played. Uh, a lot of the Life from the Loam Seismic Assault deck in the past. Mm. That was that was what he's played for a very long time. Tarmogoyf Bob, um, some of the like Flame Jab and and some of those other engine cards that you can use with all those extra things. Um, I've also seen him pick up the Amulet Bloom deck. For that that deck is so much fun. Mm -hmm. Do you, you get to like oh while well, this is on the stack while well, that's on the stack yeah and all I, these things I think he's also I think he's also picked up burn so he's he's wearing many hats this uh, modern season for sideboard looks like Leon is siding in Rakdos charm trying to get you if Leon goes too wide with too many creatures he's also bringing in rending volley uh, Grant is siding in spell pierce uh, I guess extra copies of master ways and then monastery siege. Ooh, monastery siege. Interesting, it's interesting one there. I mean, it'll yeah, make I mean, you. He's uh, probably picking dragons, or I mean, well, I guess it depends Cons on the situation. Cons is still a good move. Loot, too. loot is always yeah. good. Dragons um, is the pay uh, two frost, to target pseudo frost titan. Yeah, it gives you and all of your permanents. Mm -hmm. They have to pay two extra. Yep. I mean, it makes Rakdos charm go from two mana to four mana. That's true, and four mana is way too much. 
Uh, if Leon has to pay that much for his burn spells, it's uh, it's going to be difficult. <clears throat> so I, I think that's a, a pretty solid sideboard strategy. Mm -hmm. Looks like both of these guys uh, disliked their hand of seven. They're going to go to six. I, uh, I spoke with Leon a little bit earlier about his mm -hmm. sideboard, and um, he was excited because he just added Death Marks to the deck. Ooh. He's got he's got a lot of sideboard slots for everything but blue decks. He's got Death Mark for the green and white decks. He's got Phyrexian Crusaders, an entire oh. play set for decks that are dependent on red removal. So not good in this situation here, but... Uh, Surprise, I'm now an Infect deck. Yeah, he's just got these guys that are nigh unkillable by from a lot of decks. Protection from both red and white is just... It's so good. It's laughable. And 2-2 and yeah. two, two First Strike Infect. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, it's combat is terrible when you have to deal with yeah. something that has First so Strike even, and Infect. So even if you live through mm -hmm. the damage, your creature is now too smaller and, and probably doesn't kill mine anymore. Yeah. So Leon's on five now, and Grant is kept. So he's on six. The Merfolk deck has so many of the reveal the Merfolk effects. It always makes me chuckle because it's like, hey, it files at two. Oh, I cast this. I reveal another Merfolk. It's a two drop. And they're like, go to combat, mm -hmm. attack. Surprise, it's another two drop. Yeah, it's like, look, well, man. it wasn't really a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to show you all these good cards that I'm going to cast and you can't interact yeah. with at all because I'm going to Aether Vile them in. I wonder if he's playing the version that has Path to Exile. Like, if you're playing the... Uh... He was playing that blue-white land. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, that's not normally in a lot of the lists. Normally, you just have the... Uh... Just, just islands and mutavolts is typically the mana base for fish. Um, but if he's if he's playing the blue white land, I, I mean, ostensibly there could be some sideboard options. There's a lot of really good blue white sideboard cards. Something like a meddling mage. Ooh, meddling mage. Um, like, oh, not hey. particularly good in this matchup, but as a card in the format. You have a card I actually can't answer. Well, meddling mage <laughs> answers it. Really good against Tron. A lot of those like you can't do this type of things are good against Tron. Mm -hmm. So Curse Catcher is the play here. Ooh, it allows him to get Stony Silence in, too. Yeah, Spike affinity. Jester. Bo get him. He's just going to block. All right, so trade trade one drop for two drop. Here we go. <clears throat> so Spreading Seas on the Black Cleave Cliffs. That is now an island. So he's got blue and black mana. He does have another copy of red mana in his hand, but it's a Blood Crypt. So he's going to shock himself and then... Bolt his opponent. Spike Jester getting in there. Love it. <clears throat> Grant has to play a more fair game of magic this time with no Aether Vials on the field. So he's not going to be able to make that pseudo mana by just dropping creatures in. There's a Regery. That's the Lord that also has the, upon casting a Merfolk, trigger to tap or untap. Ooh. <clears throat> and we're going to see a, a block. No, I think it, I think that's a uh, removal spell. I'm not sure oh. what it was. could have been Lightning Bolt. I think it was just Lightning Bolt. Just just bolt it, get it yeah, out of the way. Yeah, you're right. And we see an Urborg uh, now making that island into an underground sea so there's a second copy of the blue white fish land uh revealing curse catcher monastery siege yep so we will see what is named so i, I suppose second mode would be dragons second mode would be dragons and that's the that's the pseudo yep. frost titan yep we get confirmation that's naming dragons and then here's a curse catcher so Burn spells, not so good here. You have to pay two pay extra. Two extra. Right? Just going to terminate the man. And then attack you for three more. So, Grant's down to 11. Uh, it took four mana 
from Leon to get that happening, uh, to get that attack going. And I, I still see things. So there's another, there's another copy of Siege of in his hand. Siege. Okay, so here's waves a, for two. Waves for three should be three. Oh, spreading seas. Yes. Spreading seas. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is that's a lot. Like no. master waves, uh, it's going to completely shut down the offense from it Leon. Can infinitely block Spike Jester with mm -hmm. pro protection from red. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> Unless he has a black-based removal spell. And the mana to cast it. Yeah. Dismember. Dismember's a decent one. So there's a Blood-Soaked Champion. Standard All-Star. Standard, standard medium. playable. <laughs> standard borderline it is, playable. It is in standard. <laughs> no, I've seen that card do some... There's a there's a black graveyard aggro list that's going around. Yeah. That's no, pretty I've, sweet. I've seen... There's a... It's black-white, like... I think I played against a mono black one. Is pure there? graveyard. Okay, okay, yeah. I've um, seen. Uh, there's someone who plays. There's someone who plays that here mm -hmm. uh, for FNMs. I think you're. I think you're right. He has moved to mono black. Yeah, it's it's really unfortunate to play that against Mill. No, yeah, that's not great. Because you're like, how many despoilers? Oh, all, all of them. Oh, oh, that's oh. good. Yeah. You have a card that gives you counters equal to creatures in your graveyard. Huh. <clears throat> so this is an interesting attack. Uh. Mutable and the champion egg. cannot block. Is that correct? Yes, that's I believe okay. so. So this is a safe. This is a safe attack with the master, which is a, a three two, because of the Lord of Atlantis. Uh, and then the other pumps. Uh, both both lords pump the mutable as a four. So that was an attack for four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirteen, 13 I believe. <clears throat> if no blocks, so I guess Leon's at five. And then that's game. Master of Wave, once again, doing work. <clears throat> so, Leon's going to reveal some of the sideboard information. There's the rending volleys that came in. Also brought in Rakdos Charm. So, we're going to see if our table spotter can bring us another match here in the last round. But that's going to do it for Leon Hill and Grant Christopher. Grant's going to take it two games to zero. Merfolk over Deathburn. Uh, we, we've got a couple people playing Merfolk tonight. Um, all varying degrees of success. I know mm -hmm. someone had dropped. Somebody I think is like right below. And, and Grant goes 4-0. Yeah. No, it's excellent. Uh, three, oh, wait. 3-1. Three, three, one, one, three, one. One. These, these players were X1. A lot of our, um, a lot of our XOs here during the weekly tournaments elect to just split the last round. Draw, uh, draw into. Yeah, there's there's like no real difference in prize payout, I believe, if you go X1 or X01. Yeah. So uh, that's done by design. Like some people just, like you've, you've won three rounds. You just, you want to get out of here. It's a Monday night. You probably got work in the morning. Yeah, speaking of uh, Monday nights and work in the morning, most everyone has decided to split, so we don't have a backup match for you guys. But uh, <clears throat> we did get to see a lot of interesting matches matchups tonight yeah. and we, we want to thank decks. you all for joining us for the stream yeah once again much appreciated we love it that you guys are watching um we have a lot of fun and we hope you did as well yeah if you missed any portion of the broadcast we upload everything to youtube so make sure you go there and subscribe as well as the most recent stream will be available on yep. the actual twitch channel yep uh the vods are should be up uh probably tomorrow evening maybe tomorrow in the afternoon yeah. um so all of that is available. If you follow us, you'll get an email notification if that's the way your set your settings are. Yeah, that's, that's Twitch has a bunch of uh, modes that'll tell you when your when your favorite channels are streaming. Yeah, that's the default. But all the social media, go like, subscribe, follow, do all that good stuff, yeah. and you'll be there when we're ready when we're there. To... And we will be joining you again uh, Thursday. Uh, Thursday. Thursday night for standard action. Standard Thursday. I think we'll have Jeff back in the booth. Yeah, for Thursday. Yep. He should be back in the booth. Um, we will see who's going to be joining him. I think I think I'll be. I think it's my turn to to run the floor. Yeah, Brad, Brad will be Brad will be with him. I'll be table spotting, trying to find you guys good matches. We'll figure it out. Uh, yes, we will. But once again, thank you guys again for watching. We do so appreciate it. But that's going to do it for us here at the Wasteland. <sighs> Goodbye and good night. Good night. <laughs>